let's take a little bit of time today to get into some of the fundamental processes in bioinformatics that we can do in the R language. And for this video, we're going to explore the FASTQ data format and reading those kinds of files into the R environment with bioconductor tools. Okay, so here we are in the R Studio interface, and we're going to need to set up a couple of tools for this exercise today. The first one is a bioconductor library called uh, Short Read. And I'm going to post a link with this video with some instructions on installing that library. The other one we're going to need is the library ggplot2. So if you haven't already done so, uh, we downloaded a file with the SRA toolkit. And the command that we ran over on the terminal was fastq dump and an SRR file with this ID number. And so that wrote a file called SRR137. 64788.fastq, which is what we are going to be reading and playing with here today. All right, so first things first, let's run the lines with those libraries so that we can make sure we have them in the environment. So we should have the tools we need to make this work. The first thing that we're going to need to do is read our fastq file into this environment. FASTQ is a data storage format for DNA sequence data that includes uh, both the DNA sequence itself and quality scores for each base read. This is a typical file format that you get when you do some DNA sequencing uh, because it's going to give you information about the confidence uh, for each base that was read in that experiment. So with the short read library, we have a command here, a function that we can use to read these kinds of files called read fastq, pretty easy to remember. And we're just gonna point that at this fastq file and run that. And it'll take a minute, this is not a tiny file, this is a pretty good sized one, but it reads in just a couple seconds. All right, and uh, now we can take a look at this fq object. Let's try head fq object. Uh, okay, it says class short read q length six reads because we did head width uh, between 444 and 502 cycles. Um, what that translates to is the read the reads themselves are between 444 and 502 bases nucleotides in length uh, for this the sample of six reads that we took with head. But that doesn't really give us any information about the FASTQ file itself. Let's try summary FQ. Uh, hmm. Kind of. That gives us a little bit more information. Length is 762,000. Uh, so that's a, that should be the number of reads that we get. All right. Uh, let's see. So what we, what we really want um, there's probably a couple of things that we want. So uh, we want to look at the reads, look at the DNA sequences, and uh, we want to graph the quality scores. Uh, so those would be two fairly typical quality checks that you might want to do if you get uh, some DNA sequence back from an experiment. You want to say, okay, well, how good was this? What did we get? Did we get uh, unambiguous base calls? Did we get high quality data? So let's take a look. All right, so the way that we're gonna get at the DNA sequences is we're gonna use a function uh, called sread. Let's look at head reads. Aha, now that gives us a different view. Uh, now it's showing us the first six reads, but it's actually showing us the character strings of the DNA sequence data. It skips out in the middle there, uh, it's showing us the length of each read and the, you know, the first, I don't know, 30 or so nucleotides and the last 30 or so nucleotides. So that's a good way to check. It gives us a quick look at both ends of the read and, um, and you know, the, the sizes here. And we can see that we have A's, C's, G's, and T's, not a lot of in characters or any other kind of coding. So that's a good sign. Um, one thing that we're gonna want to pull out of this, uh, are the read lengths. So in bioconductor short read, they're called width, the width values. So I'm going to create an object called widths. Like to 
So reads has several attributes. We're going to get the list of those with the at symbol, and we're going to choose ranges. And ranges has a few attributes as well. Uh, and the one that we want here is the width attribute, which roughly corresponds, or no, should be exactly the data that's in this width column uh, here in the DNA string set object. All right, so a little bit different than our normal data frame construction, uh, but pretty straightforward to access here. So we run that and let's take a look at what is widths. Okay, there we go. Widths is just a vector of values. Uh, they all seem to be, uh, you know, several hundred, two to 500 base pairs. Um, so to send this to ggplot, we have to make sure that this is a data frame. So let's make this, instead of a vector, a data frame by wrapping it in as data frame. We'll run that and then let's plot the widths for all of these reads. So I'm gonna do ggplot widths and then geom histogram with the aesthetic defined here, x equals, um, and in this case, it didn't give it a new name. So we have to do reads at ranges at width, which is gonna be a little confusing because that's actually the column name in the widths data frame now. So let's run that and find out how it does. All right, so that gave us a graph, a histogram. It shows us that most of our reads are around 500 bases long, and we've got a, a fairly long tail here, but relatively few reads that are much shorter than that. I think what's going on here is that this is these are overlapped reads from an Illumina run, uh, so paired end up to, let's say, 250 base pairs, uh, allowing for some to overlap would give us about 500 base pairs. That seems to be what's going on here, um, which explains why we only have one FASTQ file and not paired data. Uh, so that simplifies things a little bit, uh, but this is typical. You would expect whatever your read length is on uh, an Illumina run to, to be the, the top of your histogram, but there's always a little bit of variation in those data sets. All right. This kind of operation can be really informative for long read strategies. Uh, and we may take a look at that at another time. All right, let's graph the quality scores. So to get the quality scores, we're gonna use the function quality to pull that out of the FQ object. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> So the, that by itself uh, probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you. These are FRED quality scores. And uh, if you work with these a lot, you'll get a feel for the fact that letters are usually a good sign for your qualities. Uh, symbols, not such a good sign. The farther you get down into punctuation, the less of a good sign that is. And we typically see higher qualities at the beginning of the read and lower qualities towards the end of the read, which can be informative for, um, you know, for sequence quality degradation. We might wanna trim off the ends of these uh, where, the, where we see poor quality. But today we're going to calculate the average quality score. Okay, so, uh, so this B string set object, we can't just plot this directly. And besides, these are characters when what we want is a numeric value. Uh, luckily, what's actually being stored behind this object are numeric values. So we just have to switch this around in form a little bit to, uh, to, uh, to be able to access those. So we're gonna do a couple things. Um, so we're gonna convert these to numeric Q scores by converting this to a matrix. So we're gonna convert from the object qual to an object matrix. Uh, object quals to an object of the matrix type. And when that's done, we're going to calculate the average quality score for each read, which is now gonna be each row in the matrix. We're gonna get that by using the function row means. And then to plot in ggplot, we're gonna convert average score to a data frame. 
We're going to do another geom histogram, geom, geom, geom histogram, where our aesthetic is now going to be x equals uh, average scores because it adopted the matrix name as the column name when we converted from a matrix to a data frame. All right, let's plot that and see what we get. Okay, uh, we get, uh, ooh, we removed a bunch of rows that contain non-finite values. Okay, but we, uh, we lost a bunch of reads in that last ggplot. So we wanna go back and, uh, and change how we're treating the row means calculation because some of the, you know, the, we had to convert this to a matrix. So the width of the matrix is the width of the longest read and every, Every column is the base, the quality score for a base along each of those reads. So there's a bunch of NA values. This is the quality distribution then for just the longest reads. So what we want to do is change the argument NARM to be equal to true. So that should remove NAs, uh, so those null values from the calculation, and then calculate means for every row instead of just some of the rows and we plot the distribution. Uh, that helps actually quite a bit. It makes a much nicer distribution skewed way up towards the top there at, uh, at 39 for our quality score. So that's about as good as it gets. We like to see uh, most of our reads having that high average quality score and relatively few being in the 20s. That's a good sign for a sequencing run. So we've done some basic data exploration with FASTQ data in R, and we're ready to go uh, to use some more bioconductor tools to do some more exploration later. Thanks for watching.